I planned a romantic trip on our anniversary to propose to my girlfriend, but she invited her friends. Feeling like a third wheel, I left before the trip ended. Now that she knows about the proposal, she's begging me to stay and work things out. My GF, Sarah, 29, and I, M, 28, had been dating for 5 years, and I wanted to go on a vacation with her to celebrate. I planned the trip for several months, of course I shared my plans with her, and decided on skiing slash snowboarding slash other winter activities in CO. The activities seemed perfect, and I was looking forward to this for months because I wanted to propose to her at the end of the trip. Five days before the trip, Sarah dropped the ball on me that she invited two of her friends to meet her there. I was upset because I wanted to spend one-to-one -one time with Sarah for our anniversary. I feel like it was plain and clear that this was a trip just for us. Even though I expressed my concerns, Sarah insisted that her friends already made plans to come and won't back out. I decided to accept this because there was no way for me to force her friends to not come, I wish I fought more on this. I figured we could make some changes to our plans, and I would still be able to propose to her privately. Sarah essentially blew me off for her friends and we didn't get any private time. After three days of being in second place, I decided to leave the trip and head home. I told Sarah why I was leaving, and she was upset. She told her friends about my decision, and I was ganged up on. They said we were all having a great time. She thinks I'm being a jerk for making her pick between her friends and me, even though her friends weren't invited in the first place. I never had personal issues with her friends prior to this trip. I never made Sarah pick between me or her friends because everyone needs friends outside of a relationship. I'm at home now and thinking about everything. I have a date to myself before Sarah comes home, so at least I get to relax a bit. Sarah and her friends think I'm overreacting and think I ruined the trip. I think Sarah was disrespectful and rude to me by ruining the purpose of this trip and having her friends gang up on me. Am I wrong for leaving a vacation I planned for my GF after her friends came along? Edit, this was a planned anniversary slash romantic trip. I was clear that we have plans for just us two. We've been on other anniversary trips together without her friends there. We did discuss marriage beforehand, so it's not like a proposal wouldn't been out of the blue. Minor update, my friends are here at the house and they have been running potential interference, just in case her friends try to bombard and harass me. They've been great and I'm so glad to have them. Minor update too, none of Sarah's friends came by the house or harassed me yesterday slash last night, which is good. Sarah hasn't come home yet. I figured out what I want to say and have it written out. Relevant comments. Planned an anniversary trip for two where you were blown off for her friends. You were ignored and not having fun. Instead of acknowledging that what she did was wrong by inviting them and then ignoring you. They all ganged up on you including your GF. The purpose for being there never happened so why not go home. Might want to reconsider the proposal if she is this dismissive of your feelings as well as clear directions. Are there any other instances like this? Her being dismissive of what you want and pushing her agenda forward. OP, I mentioned somewhere else that I was lying to myself for years. She has sometimes blown me off for her friends after we had plans. I thought I was being a good BF by not standing in her way when she wanted to maintain her relationships with her friends. But there should have been more balance. I never demanded or expected her to always pick me over her friends because that's not healthy or normal. Comment, being a good BF also means taking care of yourself in the relationship so you are not used as a doormat. On top of that I find it really 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 odd that she needed to speak to her friends about you and her as a couple. What else does she tell her friends? OP, I don't know everything what she tells her friends. I'm hoping that she doesn't tell them everything because they don't need to know every detail about me slash my secrets. Update. From the bottom of my heart, thank you to everyone who sent me kind words and encouraging private messages. I decided that I wanted to end this entire relationship. I packed my important belongings, like passport, clothes, and arranged with my best friend to crash at his apartment until I can find my own. Usually when small issues happen in a relationship, it ties into a bigger issue of that relationship. The main reason why I decided to break up is because I realized that her friends will always be closer to her than me. Sarah has favored her friends over me and blown off some of our plans for her friends more than once. I was lying to myself for years because I didn't want to face reality yet. I had hoped she would change, but this trip really opened my eyes that I will always be in third place to her. I expressed my feelings multiple times, and Sarah promised she would change, and she didn't. Sarah came home late yesterday. I said I have a lot to get off my chest and I want to get through my notes before she talks or tries to interrupt me. The first question I asked Sarah was, how she thought the trip went. She said we all had fun and it was memorable. I shouldn't have to feel like the third wheel in my own relationship, especially on a trip that I planned. My next question was, why did you invite your friends in the first place? You knew this was an anniversary trip for us. She talked about the trip with her friends since the beginning, and they never been to CO. She thought it would be a good idea to allow them to come just so they can have fun and CO with us. 
I followed up with my lack of knowledge of her friends coming along until days before. It's one thing if they came and did their own activities. But it's another thing that every activity became a group activity. I signed up for a monogamous, not poly relationship. My last question was, did you know that I was going to propose to you? Sarah said she didn't know at all. The thought never occurred to Sarah that I was going to ask. She claimed that she wouldn't have invited her friends to come along if she knew, but I responded that, it would ruin the surprise if I told you. Sarah begged me to stay with her and believes we can work everything out. She didn't want me to throw five years away after this one bad trip. I listened to her promises to change for years regarding her friends, but nothing happened. I ultimately left Sarah with this, it's clear that there isn't enough room in your heart for your BF and your friends. As much as I love Sarah, I can't stay in a relationship where I'm not respected enough. I left Sarah in the house by herself and I drove off to my friend's place. I'll figure out how to get my name off the lease and I'll plan to get the rest of my belongings. As for the ring, I will return it this weekend. Update 2 Hello everyone. I got my stuff this past weekend from my house. I'm glad I didn't have much stuff or more heavy items. Sarah and I talked a lot about our relationship and what happened during the trip. Sarah said she is going to see a therapist and wanted to become a better GF in the future. I'm not opposed to getting back together years down the road. But I have zero intentions of being those people that are constantly on and off. If life does bring us back together, then so be it. I didn't make any promises to Sarah about a possibility of getting back together because Sarah should change for herself, and not me. I can answer more questions. Relevant comments. I think leaving even a small possibility of reuniting with her is a bad idea. Either try to fix it or cut ties completely because neither of you will be able to move on with your lives with a vague maybe. Good luck. You deserve better in my opinion. OP, I didn't make a promise to get back together. I basically said if life puts us together, then so be it. We aren't talking or texting. And we aren't in the same social circles. I don't plan to, check in with her because I want to move on. We only saw each other because of my things at the house. She said she wants to be a better GF in a general sense, not for me. She just acknowledged she messed up and wants to improve for her future relationships. I said I won't make promises to be with her. So she should change for herself, not because there is a possibility of us getting back together. It would be years before I consider getting back together, not weeks or months. I won't be that guy that will keep in contact with my ex because I want to move on. We aren't in the same social circles, so it's not like we see each other. Comment Moving on means leaving the idea of reconciliation behind, period. That is what kept me and my ex coming back together during our off times, the hope of us getting back together. We would say no we are moving on but then one of us would cave and then repeat the pattern all over again. You have to move on knowing this is it, it's over, it's done. That also means not giving her any false hope either, and possibly even blocking her on social slash your phone if she continues to reach out. Just my two cents. OP, after I got my stuff, I did block her again. I initially blocked her after I broke up. I unblocked her to coordinate getting my things. We already unfollowed each other from social media. So it seems like we are both serious about this breakup. Final update, about 6 months later. OP said to ask him anything, I am A. Below are the updates given in the comments. I'm doing very well. I've continued to do my work and have fun. I continue to train for my marathon and get out at socialize. I found an apartment, but I won't be able to move into it until May. My roommate slash friend has been very supportive and nice to me. I want to give him money as a thank you gift for letting me live at his place, but he insists that I keep my money. Plus, I want to move out because my roommate wants to have his GF over more often, and I sometimes feel like I'm in the way. My life isn't as exciting as other people, but I still live each day. Her friends didn't reach out, but some of her family did. I broke the news to my family that we broke up. It's more than likely that she broke the news to her family and probably revealed that I wanted to propose. For both of our families, some people gave me condolences, others were upset. I got off the lease officially. We, Sarah and I, had to meet with the landlord because both parties had to be in agreement. It was easier than I thought, so that was good. If I couldn't get my name off, I would have looked into getting a sublet, so that person could pay part of the rent to me. And the ring was returned a long time ago and I got my money back. It's crazy to think it's been 6 months since my breakup, but I'm still alive and kicking. It's been a couple months since I've talked to my ex and I do miss her, but I'm not as vulnerable and sad as I was earlier this year. As far as I'm aware, we both are moving on with our lives. I'm in no rush to get into another relationship now, so we will see what happens.